5,000 miles ago, I put Valvoline's Restore and Protect in my wife's van. Hi, I'm Lake, the motor oil geek, and at 180,000 miles only using the Toyota OEM oil, it's the perfect candidate to see, does this oil do in the real world what it did in the lab? You see, in a previous video, we actually visited Valvoline's secret R&D facility and they showed us how well the Valvoline Restore and Protect did in terms of cleaning deposits on the test engines. But that's a test engine. What will it do in the real world? Let's go pop the hood, take an oil sample, and find out. So we frequently get the question, what's the best way to take the sample? Is it doing a drain sample or is it using the vacuum pump? Well, either way works well. I prefer to keep it consistent. If you start off with a drain sample, keep taking drain samples. If you start off with the vacuum pump, keep doing it that way because the sampling method itself can have some influence on the result. And of course, you're looking for that trend analysis to tell you what you're doing. So the previous sample I took before we changed to the Restore and Protect, we used the vacuum sample. So that's how we're gonna do it again this time. Plus the vacuum sampling method is way easier and a lot cleaner. All you have to do, remove the dipstick. And we're gonna come back and check on that in a second. Because since we did that oil change, I've not looked at the dipstick. And I have pictures from before we changed the oil. So after we take this sample, let's look at the dipstick and see if the Restore and Protect could clean the dipstick. Okay, here's the moment of truth. I've been waiting to see what this dipstick looked like. Remember, the Valvoline guy said, it takes multiple oil changes for it to do all of its work. I think it said up to like three or four oil changes to really get those pistons really clean. So this is just the first oil change. We're gonna do a second change and a third change as long as these results still look good. But I can't wait to see what this dipstick looks like after just this first change. And I can tell you there was varnish all over the dipstick before the first oil change. It looked like a 180,000 mile old engine. Now let's take a look and see. It's perfectly clean, just like brand new. That's incredible. Roger, Michael, you guys did a good job. Since the Restore and Protect did such a good job cleaning up the dipstick, I'm assuming it's cleaned out other things in the engine as well, which means I won't be surprised if these used oil analysis results don't show a increase in wear metals from before just because it's cleaning everything out. So let's send this sample off to the lab and take a look at those results. But before we send this sample to the lab, we need to make sure we're not fooling ourselves. What if the filter had clogged because it cleaned so well. Remember, oil analysis can only see particles smaller than about eight to 10 micron. But if the filter had bypassed, it could have let through particles much larger than that that the oil analysis couldn't detect. That's why we have this device that can detect those particles larger than 10 micron. So we have our sample of the oil prepared for the test Let's see what this device says. So there we go. Zero parts per million larger than 10 microns. So we know that whatever these oil analysis results reveal is what is real. Speaking of the filter, let's check it out. So after 5,000 miles, it is looking really good. There is nothing 
in these pleats. So any kind of deposit that was removed was dissolved it is definitely not clogging the filter. So let's take a look at these results between the Valvoline Restore and Protect and the Toyota Zero W20. The fact that they're both Zero W20s in synthetic is the only thing these oils have in common. Chemically, they are completely different. We know that the Valvoline Restore and Protect has that synergistic system of different components that provides the cleaning, which we've already seen. Now, let's see what the protection part looks like. And right off the bat, the first thing we see is that the silicon levels are lower with the Restore and Protect compared to the Toyota. Now, to be fair, that's 10,000 miles on the Toyota sample versus only 5,000 miles with the Restore and Protect. So that one might just be a function of mileage. So we're not gonna hold that one against the Toyota or give credit to the Restore and Protect for that one. Now, let's go ahead and look at the rest of the wear metals. And as you can see, the wear rate per 1,000 miles is exactly the same. Of course, the iron level is lower, but it has half the number of miles as the Toyota oil. But the wear rate per 1,000 miles says the Restore and Protect is protecting just as good as the Toyota oil that has all of that molly in there. So this is really impressive. Now here's a little nugget that's fantastic, the manganese levels. So the manganese is higher with the Restore and Protect. And the reason for that is this is evidence of how well the Restore and Protect is cleaning the ring grooves because manganese is an octane booster that is found in fuel sometimes. So this is proof that the Restore and Protect is cleaning those ring grooves and dissolving that stuff, which is releasing some old manganese that was built up in the deposits in the ring grooves. How cool is freaking that? That manganese didn't come from anywhere else. It came from those old deposits that the Restore and Protect broke down and cleaned out of the rings. That's amazing, so cool. So that's just the results from my wife's fan. Here at Speed Diagnostics, we've seen lots of samples of their Restore and Protect in the last few months. So let's see how my wife's results compare to everyone else's results. And as I said, there are lots of samples from the last few months of the Restore and Protect and all the different viscosity grades in vehicles of lots of different mileages, from you know, high mileage vehicles to low mileage vehicles. But the one thing we can do is we can basically get an average of all the miles on those samples. Then we can total up all the wear metals from those samples and calculate out a wear rate per 1,000 miles. And guess what? it comes in right at 2.7. So the real world results of all the customers compare really well to what we see with my wife's van. And this is conclusive proof that the Valvoline Restore and Protect does exactly what the name says. It can restore. We see the cleaning power of this oil, but it also protects. I mean, 2.7 parts per million per 1,000 miles is better than average on what we see. And we do hundreds of samples per week here. Again, conclusive proof that the Restore and Protect does exactly what the name says. Now, I know I'm friends with some of the guys at Valvoline, but I'm also friends with other companies within the oil industry. Well, none of them are paying me to make these videos. I made this video because I wanted to see for myself what this product did in the real world. And I'm impressed enough by it that one, we're gonna keep it in my wife's van, but number two, I wanna try this in my daughter's car. Even though it's new, I wanna see, will it provide better protection than the Toyota Zero W8? I bet it will, and maybe we'll show those results in a future video. In the meantime, check out one of these and I'll see you next time.